the Lord said to me, Jeremiah, go and buy a clay jar from a potter. Go out to the valley of Ben Hinnom, near the front of the potsherd gate. Take some of the elders of the people and some priests with you. Tell them what I tell you. Say to those who are with you, King of Judah and people of Jerusalem, listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord All-Powerful, the God of the people of Israel, says. I will soon make a terrible thing happen to this place. Everyone who hears about it will be amazed and full of fear. I will do these things because the people of Judah have stopped following me. They have made this a place for foreign gods. The people of Judah have burned sacrifices in this place to other gods. The people long ago did not worship those gods. Their ancestors did not worship them. These are new gods from other countries. The kings of Judah filled this place with blood of innocent children. The kings of Judah built high places for the god Baal. They used those places to burn their sons in the fire. They burned their sons as burnt offerings to the god Baal. I did not tell them to do that. I did not ask them to offer their sons as sacrifices. I never even thought of such a thing. Now people call this place Topheth in the Valley of Hinnom. But I give you this warning. This message is from the Lord. The days are coming when people will call this place the Valley of Slaughter. At this place, I will ruin the plans of the people of Judah and Jerusalem. The enemy will chase them, and I will let the people of Judah be killed with swords in this place. I will make their dead bodies food for the birds and wild animals. I will completely destroy this city. People will whistle and shake their heads when they pass by Jerusalem. They will be shocked when they see how the city was destroyed. The enemy will bring its army around the city. That army will not let people go out to get food. So the people in this city will begin to starve. They will become so hungry that they will eat the bodies of their own sons and daughters. And then they will begin to eat each other. Jeremiah, tell this to the people, and while they are watching, break the jar. Then say this, the Lord All-Powerful says, I will break the nation of Judah and the city of Jerusalem, just as someone breaks a clay jar. And like a broken jar, the nation of Judah cannot be put together again. It will be the same for the nation of Judah. The dead people will be buried here in Topheth until there is no more room. I will do this to these people and to this place. I will make this city like Topheth. This message is from the Lord. The houses in Jerusalem will become as dirty as the place Topheth. The king's palaces will be ruined like this place, Topheth, because the people worship false gods on the roofs of their houses. They worship the stars and burn sacrifices to honor them. They gave drink offerings to false gods. Then Jeremiah left Topheth, where the Lord had told him to speak. Jeremiah went to the Lord's temple and stood in the courtyard of the temple. Jeremiah said to all the people, This is what the Lord All-Powerful, the God of Israel, says. I said I would bring many disasters to Jerusalem and the villages around it. I will soon make this happen because the people are very stubborn. They refuse to listen and obey me. Pasher, son of Emmer, was a priest. He was the highest officer in the temple of the Lord. When he heard Jeremiah say those things in the temple yard, he had Jeremiah the prophet beaten. And he had Jeremiah's hands and feet locked between large blocks of wood. This was at the upper gate of Benjamin of the Lord's temple. The next day, Pastor took Jeremiah out from between the blocks of wood. Then Jeremiah said to him, The Lord's name for you is not Pasher. Now his name for you is surrounded by terror. That is your name because of what the Lord says. I will soon make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends. You will watch enemies killing your friends with swords. I will give all the people of Judah to the king of Babylon. He will take them away to the country of Babylon, and his army will kill the people of Judah with their swords. The people of Jerusalem worked hard to build things and become wealthy, but I will give all these things to their enemies. The king in Jerusalem has many treasures, but I will give all the treasures to the enemy. The enemy will take them and carry them away to the country of Babylon. And Pasher, you and all your people living in your house will be taken away. You will be forced to go and live in the country of Babylon. You will die in Babylon, and you will be buried in that foreign country. You told lies to your friends. You said these things will not happen, but all your friends will also die and be buried in Babylon. Lord, you tricked me, and I certainly was fooled. You are stronger than I am. So you won. I have become a joke. 
People laugh at me and make fun of me all day long. Every time I speak, I shout. I'm always shouting about violence and destruction. I tell the people about the message that I received from the Lord, but they only insult me and make fun of me. Sometimes I say to myself, I will forget about him. I will not speak anymore in his name. But when I say that, his message is like a fire burning inside of me. It feels like it is burning deep in my bones. I get tired of trying to hold his message inside. And finally, I'm not able to hold it in. I hear people whispering against me. Everywhere, I hear things that frighten me. Even my friends are speaking against me. People are just waiting for me to make a mistake. They are saying, let us lie and say that he did something bad. Maybe we could trick Jeremiah. Then we will have him. We will finally be rid of him. Then we will grab him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me. He is like a strong soldier. So those who are chasing me will fall. They will not defeat me. They will fail. They will be disappointed. They will be ashamed and they will never forget that shame. Lord all powerful, you test good people. You look deeply into a person's mind. I told you my arguments against these people. So let me see you give them the punishment they deserve. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. He saves the lives of the poor. He saves them from the wicked. Curse the day that I was born. Don't bless the day my mother had me. Curse the man who told my father the news that I was born. It's a boy, he said. You have a son. He made my father very happy when he told him the news. Let that man be like the cities the Lord destroyed. He had no pity on them. Let him hear the shouts of war in the morning. Let him hear battle cries at noontime. Because he did not kill me while I was in my mother's womb. If he had killed me then, my mother would have been my grave, and I would not have been born. Why did I have to come out of her body? All I have seen is trouble and sorrow, and my life will end in shame. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and surrounded it with his army. This happened during the third year that Jehoiakim was king of Judah. The Lord allowed Nebuchadnezzar to defeat Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar took all the dishes and other things from God's temple and carried them to Babylon. He put those things in the temple of his gods. Then King Nebuchadnezzar ordered Ashpenaz, the man in charge of his officials, to bring some of the boys into the palace to train them. He was to include boys from among the Israelites, from important Judean families, and from the royal family of Judah. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted only healthy boys who did not have any bruises, scars, or anything wrong with their bodies. He wanted handsome, smart young men who were able to learn things quickly and easily to serve in the palace. He told Ashpenaz to teach these young men the language and writings of the Chaldeans. King Nebuchadnezzar gave the young men a certain amount of food and wine every day. This was the same kind of food that he ate. He wanted them to be trained for three years. After that, they would become servants of the king of Babylon. Among those young men were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah from the tribe of Judah. Ashpenab gave them Babylonian names. Daniel's new name was Belteshazzar, Hananiah's was Shadrach, Mishael's was Meshach, and Azariah's was Abednego. Daniel did not want to eat the king's rich food and wine because it would make him unclean. So he asked Ashpenaz for permission not to make himself unclean in this way. God calls Ashpenaz, the man in charge of the officials, to be kind and loyal to Daniel. But Ashpenaz told Daniel, I am afraid of my master, the king. He ordered me to give you this food and drink. If you don't eat this food, you will begin to look weak and sick. You will look worse than other young men your age. The king will see this and he will become angry with me. He might cut off my head and it would be your fault. Then Daniel talked to the guard who had been put in charge of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah by Ashpenaz. He said, Please give us this test for ten days. Don't give us anything but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then after ten days, compare us with the other young men who eat the king's food. See for yourself who looks healthier. And then decide how you want to treat us your servants. So the guard agreed to test Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah for ten days. After ten days, Daniel and his friends looked healthier than all the young men who ate the king's food. So the guard continued to take away the king's special food and wine and to give only vegetables to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. 
God gave these four young men the wisdom and ability to learn many different kinds of writing and science. Daniel could understand all kinds of visions and dreams. At the end of the three years of training, Ashpenaz brought all the young men to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked to them and found that none of the young men were as good as Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So these four young men became the king's servants. Every time the king asked them about something important, they showed great wisdom and understanding. The king found they were ten times better than all the magicians and wise men in his kingdom. So Daniel served the king until the first year that Cyrus was king. 